Intersubjectivity and Dialogue, a presentation by the Los Angeles Erica May, Garcia Jimena Grace, and Gabato Shakira. I am Jimena Grace P. Garcia, and I am tasked to report the first part of our topic, and I hope that you learn something from this. Um, so let's start. Intersubjectivity A term originally coined by the philosopher Edmund Husserl, 1859-1938, simply stated as the interchange of thoughts and feelings, both conscious and unconscious, between two persons or subjects as facilitated by empathy generally means something that is shared between two minds. A basic human example of intersubjectivity is having a shared, common agreement in the definition of an object. So most people would experience intersubjectivity when asked to picture an apple. The definition of an apple would be the same. Intersubjectivity simply means the connection between two or more people having the same thoughts. It is based in feelings or opinions rather than facts. Just like relating to the way a person experiences something on his or her own. It is also the relation or intersection between people's cognitive perspectives. It is used to refer to the common sense. If people share the common sense, then they share a definition of the situation. Aristotle wrote the book Politics. He quoted, Man is by nature a social animal. An individual who is unsocial naturally and accidentally is either beneath our notice or more than human. Society is something that precedes the individual. Anyone who either cannot lead the calm life or is so self-sufficient as not to need to and therefore does not partake of society is either a beast or a god. What? does he mean by that? Do you have any idea? So let me explain this to you. Animal has an instinctive need. Thus, people, or let's say man, badly needs society to survive. Human survival depends on another human's efforts. We develop and learn about the world around us. It is the key of our survival and also to our happiness. Without human contact for too long can break one's heart. According to a new study of social isolation published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, more than 1,600 people suffer from heart failure. It is because of loneliness. Loneliness can accelerate cognitive decline in older adults and isolated individuals. They are twice likely to die prematurely than those who tend to have more social interactions. 17th century English author John Doon quoted that no man is an island. It means that no one is self-sufficient and everyone relies on others. Intersubjectivity and its dimension. Basis of one's intersubjectivity is the fact that as a human person, he or she is not a solitary subject who exists by himself or herself in this world. It is recognized that there is an other or a though 
are your fellow men who also exist in the world. This world is not a private world, but a social world and the human shares this world with his or her fellow humans. And their subjectivity can be understood either as a personal relationship between two subjects, I and thou, where the thou could be a fellow man or supreme being, or as an impersonal relationship between the individual subject and an anonymous crowd or a social group. Two dimensions of intersubjectivity are human relations. Interpersonal dimension. Person to person. More intimate. Bound by personal or subjective interests like those in friendship, parent and child relationship, and marital relation between husband and wife. This type of relation um, doesn't need to tell exactly what they want to say because the other person seems to understand them. Social dimension not as intimate as that in the interpersonal dimension. In fact, it could be very casual. Bound by common activities, objectives, or social interests, such as those that exist in the relations in the community, society, school, church, and neighborhood. Interpersonal dimension may develop in the social dimension in a particular community or school. For example, in the Facebook community, you have plenty of people that you can chat in that community. Um, katulad na lang natin, mga millennials. Um, di ba marami tayong nakakachat lagi and Stranger naman sila, di ba? Although, friends mo siya sa FB, but hindi kayo intimate, katulad ng bonding nyo with friends na personally talaga. So, ayun, nakachat mo siya, and yung relationship nyo ay tinatawag na social dimension. Then later on, as days go by, lagi kayo nagchat-chat, and umabot na sa nagkakilala na kayo and meet up, kanon Then, naging interpersonal dimension na because nagkakilala na kayo and you have the same interests and kilala nyo na talaga yung isa't isa. The Notion of Dialogue Martin Bobber Jewish existentialist philosopher referred to personal relations as dialogue. This idea is found in his major works, I and Thou, and Between Man and Man. It is hard to imagine a human existing alone in the world. Being human with a human or a fellow human it's not only about being side by side with another fellow human. It means entering or establishing a relation with a fellow human. This kind of human relation is grounded on dialogue. Dialogue has many meanings, such as conversation or discussion. But for Bobber, dialogue has deeper meaning. It signifies the life of relation. According to him, dialogue is not limited to a human and a fellow human. It is also between human and the supreme being, or between human and nature. So, one's fundamental relation is triadic, one's self, the supreme being, and others. The other in the relation could be a fellow person, the world, or nature. 
Popper mentioned three kinds of dialogues. Technical dialogue is focused on objective understanding, always relies on spoken or written language. This is why always requires that one is attentive to what the other is saying. Monologue The speaker is not focused on the other person whom he or she speaks to or communicates with. The person speaking is focused only on himself or herself and what he or she is saying. Genuine Dialogue The two parties involved are focused on each other. They pay attention to the presence of the other. Can happen even the two parties are quiet, even when they are not talking, moving, or acting. There are moments that are so quiet, yet there's a dialogue on it. Can happen beyond the levels of speech. It is a relation that is very personal. The further topics are to be discussed by Erika May and Shakira Kapata. Thank you for listening. A human person should be understood as a subject. Bopper insists that a person should be distinguished from other things for he, she is a subject. A human person as a subject or self is an I. The other individual who is not the self but who is also a human person is called a thaw, to distinguish him, her, from the I. According to Martin, human beings can adopt two attitudes, which is I thaw and I eat. I thaw is a relation of subject to subject, while I eat is a relation of subject to object. Kaya nga sinasabi dito ni Martin na a person should be understood as a subject not as an object. Sinasabi din dito sa second paragraph na bilang isang individual, ang tawag sa atin o sa ating salili ay I. At yung mga taong nakapaligid sa atin, ang tawag naman sa kanila ay to. If one just regards them as an object, then one reduces them to an eat. But state, if I face a human being as my thought and say the primary word I thought to him, he, she is not a thing among things and does not consist of things. So, sinasabi dito na when a subject is analyzed as an object, then the subject is no longer a subject but becomes an object. So, hindi mo na siya masasabing to, magiging it na siya. At tulad na sinabi ko kanina, na ang to is subject to subject while it is subject to object. The to as a person is not something to be experienced or described. If one addresses somebody as his, her fellow men, as his, her to, one must not focus his, her attention on the qualities, traits, or characteristic of the other person.